Many people have been led to believe that, although the Bible is full of interesting stories, its history is mythological and made up, with no archaeological support. This series is dedicated to those who need help dislodging that dubious claim. Stop. Please be advised that the following video is technical and probably boring, and deals with the controversy over Egyptian chronology. Feel free to skip this video or pause and rewind as you follow along. I feel that this video is important because many scholars have been dismissing the Exodus precisely because they find no evidence for it. However, within the last 20 years, other scholars are concluding that Ramses II, the Hollywood pharaoh of the Exodus, is way too late to be contemporary with Moses, and that the whole approach needs to change. Scholars look for evidence of the Exodus and conquest in particular places and settings based on synchronized chronologies of Egypt and the Bible. In fact, did you know that the Bible was actually used to help establish dates for ancient Egypt based on synchronisms of monument names and biblical names? These synchronisms were established a long time ago, and it has lately become a very hot topic in biblical archaeology. One of those synchronisms is the connection between a known ruler of Egypt, Shawshank I, and the biblical pharaoh Shishak from 1 Kings 14. The names sound similar, and Shawshank really did have a campaign up in Palestine, so it felt like a sure thing. I myself have believed and taught others this synchronism. However, there are actually a few problems with it. First, Shawshank I did campaign in Palestine, but his battles never included Jerusalem, where he supposedly took gold from the temple. His bragging monument includes approximately 150 toponyms representing places subjugated by Shawshank, including names of the cities in order of location, and there is no missing space where Jerusalem should be. It just isn't there. In fact, only one of the fifteen fortresses strengthened by Rehoboam in anticipation of an attack from Egypt is mentioned by Shawshank. Also, the chronology gets messed up when you consider the Merneptah steel, a stone discovered by William Flinders in 1896. It details the successful defense of the Delta region against an invasion of Libyans, and at the bottom contains a victory poem where other countries that he dominates are listed. Israel is actually mentioned among other nations in the Levant, which is curious, since Merneptah's dad is Ramses II, supposedly the pharaoh of the Exodus, and at the time of Merneptah's reign, the Israelites would be dwelling in tents, in the desert, hardly an established nation in Palestine. Another block of stone called the Berlin Pedestal mentions Israel by name as part of a series of name rings of subjugated nations, along with Ashkelon and Canaan. This monument is earlier in e Egyptian chronology than the Merneptah steel, which puts Israel as a nation in Palestine earlier than we expected. If Israel is a nation in the Levant around the time of Ramses II, and not a ragtag bunch of slaves, and if Shashank I isn't the same king as mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 14 called Shishak, then we may have to look further back than we were expecting into Egypt's past to find the Israelites. So how do we know where to look for the Israelites when ancient chronology is likely to be a bit messed up? Well, recently scholars have proposed to stop using the Bible at all to establish Egypt's chronology. Incidentally, the priests of Babylon also kept a religiously close record of astronomical events, such as solar and lunar eclipses. This and other notes given in cuneiform tablets have allowed researchers to use computer astronomy programs to date, with high confidence, the sacking of Babylon by Murshili I and the end of the first Babylonian dynasty, Babylonian king lists then allow you to reverse engineer dates for Hammurabi's destruction of Mari and the palace of Mari's king Zimrilim. French archaeologist André Parot excavated Zimrilim's palace in 1933 and found an archive of cuneiform tablets listing gifts from other rulers. One was King Yantin Amu of Byblos. If King Zimrilim is dated by Babylonian records established by a unique astronomical event, and Zimrilim's records have Yantin, then we can bring in Egypt, because Yantin's recorded overlord is Egyptian pharaoh Neferhotep I of the 13th dynasty. 
putting them all in the 16th century BC, which is controversial, very controversial, mostly because it's new and upsetting, not because the methodology was wacky. This means people's published work may have to be revised. Actually, I may as well mention that David Lappin, postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Glasgow, also used a series of 39 astronomical events found in papyrus documents from the archaeological digs at a site called El Lahun, 60 miles south of Cairo. This is different than the Babylonian priest records of eclipses. He used both astronomical tables and computer software to locate this series of events in an attempt to locate the reigns of pharaohs Senusaret III and Amenemhat III. His research was scrutinized by professors Peter Huber, Liz Bernson, and Leo Deputit, other experts in the field, and they called his calculations, quote, solid and well-researched. And guess what happened? He couldn't find these events where people expected to find them according to orthodox chronology publications, but he did find this series with 97% successful matching, which matches the brand new chronology. This actually confirms the new series of dating based on that Babylonian cuneiform description of solar and lunar eclipses. Dr. Lappin wrote that, quote, astronomy does not support the orthodox chronology. He's referring to where in time we expect to find different pharaohs and their contemporaries in the Near East. So why am I giving you this long video explaining why chronology needs to be updated and why the field of archaeoastronomers is currently messing up established teaching on Egypt? Because it means that we need to stop looking for evidence of an exodus during the reign of Ramses II, no matter how many Hollywood movies have him as the pharaoh. He's way too late to be contemporary with where the Bible puts Moses. So if you go with the astronomy-established chronology, and only then pick up your Bible to find who is contemporary with whom, then the party really starts. Continue on with me in this series to see what kinds of evidence there is for Joseph, Israelite settlements in Egypt, and if there is evidence for an exodus at some other time in Egypt's past.